be shared with you. And then moving on to the ecosystem mapping. And uh, with the ecosystem mapping, there are multiple different ways those have been done. And as mentioned, there's probably as many ways to map than there has been mapping exercises done. And just like with uh, all the other different aspects, uh, we have looked um, not only like from our own experiences, but all the different works and finding where are the most effective and logical ways, and then looking and combining those into the framework uh, that we have structured so that all of the individual pieces that you can find from Startup Commons, they are independently effective, but you can trust that all of those are connected uh, with each other and combined they are even more effective. So it's like a suit of things that are all structured around same logic and same um, ecosystem framework. So <clears throat> for the mapping exercise, the top level steps to ecosystem development is map out the starting position, identify and fix gaps and bottlenecks, implement measurements, iteratively improve, measure and learn. And usually where the, the things start and often also end is the mapping of starting position. And that's it. And then for, okay, we have done it. And that's it. Uh, sometimes it continues to identifying and fixing gaps and bottlenecks. Maybe there is like identifying 25 things, maybe two of those keep moving forward and get fixed. The rest of them are forgotten and someone creates that list six months later or two years later and same happens again. So these are the, 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 the kind of the main, main challenges that need to get past this repetitive replication of, of same solution in different years. And implement measurements is already very, very uh, rare that there are shared measures used for the ecosystem development or that they are created but they are not implemented to use. And, and, and then this iteratively improve, measure and learn is the hardest part. And this starts to connect back to uh, uh, what I mentioned uh, that, has, that took us. We had to see this repeating several times enough in same ecosystems until we could say, yes, this is a repeating pattern that we see before we can say that, yes, this actually does happen. And, uh, and in many ecosystems, those ecosystem builders or developers who have been there for long may have seen it in their ecosystem and got frustrated by thinking that that doesn't happen in other ecosystems, but it also does. So this is, uh, this is uh, really to, to move past this. So, but we need to go through the, the, the mapping uh, or update the mapping, what is there or uh, aggregate the mappings that are there into something that can be then made that shared thing that could, like if there's three different mappings done, the effort should be to try to merge those and then all those three actors together push that mapping forward. So that's of course the, the approach. But to describe the ecosystem, the map, the ecosystem, ecosystem level, common um, language to label, startup services, events, funding, instrument, blog post tools, ideas, and so forth. So <clears throat> uh, the key being, if there is no any other thing, there should be shared terminology as a collaborative, uh, as a collaborative thing. So we can all understand that if we wouldn't have English now as shared language, even though it's probably not all of our native language, it works. So we need to have uh, similar uh, clarity in our ecosystem development. We can't use terms that for different people mean different things. If I said red, it can't mean green for you. Otherwise, we will not get to the same direction. So <clears throat> mapping the um, services. Uh, so 
can use this uh, development phase as a canvas, as a blank canvas, to look first through all of the different services in the ecosystem from the perspective of building services products or supporting supporting this development side. And we can look at uh, building teams, skills, commitment, organization values, cultures, uh, agreements, uh, business processes, and so forth. And then, of course, we need to map both of these, and we can use the development phases to bring hardcore uh, clarity to make it clear what service is meant for what purpose, uh, for what development phase, where you are as a talent or as an entrepreneur or as a startup. And this is very high level, but it brings that crucial dimensions of the development phase and the separation of these two things. There could be many, many different ways to go even more granular, but it's a lot of value if even this simple high level uh, separation uh, is used uh, to, to, to make the services clear. So as a workshop session or as an own independent project or, or hire people, uh, consultants coming to do this effort, doesn't really matter because it's existing information, putting it in the package, uh, checking the information that it actually represents the right things and putting those into place or asking every single organization in a uh, online exercise to put themselves in the map and then centralizing collecting that or doing a crowdsource exercise. There's been many of these things have been done before, so not not uh, challenge as such. Uh, it should be looked from the, the the services target perspective. So again, idea creation, idea validation, product creation, product validation team formation, team validation, attracting and inspiring uh, and, and, and really making help, helping everyone to understand so what is the target of your service uh, and to help find where does it uh, fit on the, on the development map. And <clears throat> when we look at um, kind of the cornerstone organizations, uh, those are there, but of course, there some of their services or some of their departments may extend much further. Uh, but we have typically higher education organizations feeding the talent uh, and, and IPs or research findings. Uh, it's not limited to that by all means, but it is one source. Uh, and on the other side, you have big companies who are looking for outsourced, validated innovations in a form of, you know, buying the company, but they are also interested in entrepreneurial talent, regardless of whether those startups are successful or failed. So, so they want uh, to find uh, people to their organization that help drive uh, entrepreneurial energy and knowledge, uh, talent that comes from being exposed to the markets and, and bigger challenges than just coming from education uh, alone. So there's always a demand for entrepreneurial people, whether they succeed or fail, uh, at least in uh, more mature ecosystems where failure is understand, understood as a, a learning experience rather than a failure as a negative thing. So, <clears throat> and then uh, there are also funding and financial organizations that, that may have instruments themselves uh, for multiple different phases uh, or different funding organizations in different phases and of course government is always there from you know when you're born to when you die and so forth it's always there also in this context and in in between here is where the ecosystem lives with its startups at various development phases uh, the actual entities and the people, the talent, the entrepreneurs, business angels, and so forth, and the support organizations and services in the middle of the mix of everything. So the general approach to, to, to kind of what type of services 
there, there should be this uh, one type of like generically available services being those like mostly event formats contributing for different types of knowledge but that are not time consumed it's like service buffet you go and pick what you need when you need uh, what you feel like um, and focus on basic learnings inspiration and exploration of uh, ideas for challenges or problems being faced at the moment then you have the acceleration style format which is for most potential ones fixed time period format dedicated and planned services focus on execution and the key is that the acceleration phase is after where there's a commitment ability to team to execute for a period of time on their product because the acceleration style doesn't work if people are not there or they don't have they have to worry about other priorities they don't have money and time to focus on the staff on open services side they're more like startup weekends or um, uh, or that type of areas uh, and then showcase when there's a scaling phase, best startups for investments and inspiration for new uh, talent and, and, and new entrepreneurs. But the focus on this area is for scaling. And the types of services was a little bit of mention, but here's a, a section of uh, connecting quality research IP uh, with with the startups that rarely happens it's usually not it may happen in the form of companies that are in the in the connection of university the students or the researchers but doesn't expand a lot so that entrepreneurs outside of universities would be connected effectively with the ip that the universities would have for example um, canvas workshops basic website builds presentation builds so the type of uh, services <clears throat> and uh, and just to give a, 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 a generic highlight but then when we really do the mapping properly we can really put uh, the, the services like every individual service we can put specifically for where does this service uh, want to start catering for the company or the individuals and where does uh, they should exit from the service so where does the service process start where does the service process end and then what is the connected services and so forth and of course many startups consume multiple of these services at the same time but they should be consuming services that are same time at the same development phase that they are and uh, here is an example of a mapping exercise. Um, this is already several years uh, back. Some of these services are relevant. Some of them have changed names. Uh, these are collections from multiple different ecosystems, but this is just an, uh, an example of how the mapping can, can look like. And <clears throat> And then, of course, when you do the mapping, then the next level beyond, like getting it at that type of high-level format of what's the service name, uh, which part does it belong to, and what development phase is then, of course, to collect the key information of each of the service in a template-driven documentation fashion, so, so that it's not different formats of, of information collected. So, we have created these templates to, um, to help collect standardized or use it as a template driven uh, documentation to collect relevant information um, from also uh, in addition to basic information to really from the perspective of uh, making sense of what the service is for, how it is measured, uh, when is it available. So also from those aspects that actually matter for the customer. So they need to know, is it available to me? Is it available today? Is it available tomorrow? What is required for me to get that service? Does it cost money? Is it free? Is the uh, entry criteria? Is there a limitation of how many they can serve? Uh, and so forth. And then most importantly, 
to also have uh, the key performance indicators, both sides. How do we measure the, the, the performance? How did we improve the startup with our service? And then the service related KPIs. How effectively are we serving our startups? How many can we handle per person, per budget and so forth? Type of uh, KPIs. Four, uh, comparability between uh, similar services uh, across the ecosystem. So the key part really is that if we look at uh, this map and when you do the ecosystem mapping and it may look nice and clean and you know full of different services and we may feel comfortable that oh we have really good services and but when you put it through the lens of how is the availability monthly weekly and so forth and you apply that to that ecosystem mapping the reality may start to come through that actually yeah this is only available two times a year this is uh, you know an, a, an annual event uh, and these activities, yeah, we have that, but actually we are serving like 30 startups per year uh, and, and so forth. So really getting a sense of what is the realistic expectation of how much uh, the support can actually cater for uh, the, the pace and volume in the ecosystem. And really the attached problem with this is to to maintain a holistic picture of uh, the constantly developing and evolving ecosystem um, and measure the services and results of different development projects and policy actions over a period of time. Uh, collect and maintain and share this data openly for the benefit of everyone in the ecosystem. <clears throat> so, that the service A in the beginning part of the ecosystem uh, can know two years later what happened to the company that they served two years prior, uh, where are they now, and, and, and so forth. So this type of information is, is what we're referring to. So these are, when we talk about those shared things, uh, um, we have put these five principles for uh, developing ecosystems. So, one, only things that can be understood can be developed. So, if the terminology is vague, if there is not enough accuracy in the language, and if uh, it's not understood what the startup is, how innovation, what's the difference between entrepreneurs, and, and so forth, it's really hard to develop. Uh, if it's un if there's uh, too much unclarity. Two, only the things that can be measured can be improved. If there are no measures in place, if there's no proper measures and logical measures in place, if they are not used, or uh, if they keep kept, are kept changed all the time, then by definition, if you can't measure, you can't improve. Uh, because how do you know if it went better or worse? Only by sharing things and making them visible and available and known about can those become common, aka shared things. And if they are not, then people will keep recreating uh, the same things over and over again. The worst case in the same ecosystem because of the business vertical dividends they may be creating same programs, uh, same different like things repeatedly that are very much the same using uh, both side efforts and then, then they are almost the same but they are not compatible and they are paid twice and, uh, and, and so forth. So this of course as Startup Commerce name indicates as well, we are very much focused on helping to make sure that shared things get spread shared knowledge gets spread, shared things are harmonized, aggregates merge from their best uh, features and then uh, collectively put out. And a lot of what we have are also open for contribution uh, openly all the time. On our Google Drive, we have our curriculum for people to, to go and edit and contribute. We have uh, 
uh, our advisory booklets, our how to build a startup booklets, freely available for contribution to improve them um, and keep them fresh. Um, and we, of course, do a lot of contribution our own based on all the learnings over over time. But the key is that we may need to make them visible, available, and known about. And ultimately, if there are no shared things being worked on, so if they are not in use, there really is no working together. So in the context of ecosystem, if I have mine and you have yours, and we both use our own, then it's really hard for us to collaborate together. But if we have ours, and I'm using that, and you are using that, then by definition, if I want to make an improvement, I can, or we need to together make a sense, like does that improvement make a sense? And if we need to make a separation, we can make an extension or addition to that, but we can still keep working on the same things. <clears throat> and that brings that silo breaking in practice, while at the same time saving on resource. Uh, resources, financials, and, and time. And finally, only things that are in shared use can be benchmarked, scaled, and developed together. So when they are really in use, they can then be improved together, and their progress and improvements and iterations can be measured. Uh, the outcome, outcomes can be better measured because the KPIs are expected to be also the same and results can be compared and so forth. So uh, 